Hey guys, Matt, we're working on the Cushman in my home garage today. And uh, last couple of episodes, we've been doing a lot of rust repair. And for me to break up a project and make it uh, a little less boring and keep it interesting and fresh, I usually try and do some custom work in between doing my rust repair. So today what we're gonna work on is Frenching in a original 39 Ford taillight. This is kind of an iconic custom taillight. All right, so Frenching a light, whether it's headlights or taillights, is an old school method for taking the stainless trim off around the light and basically mounting it from behind so that the lens itself is flush and gives a smooth finish. This is kind of an iconic custom taillight right in the center of the patch that we made last time. And uh, we'll get this Frenched in. It'll start kind of looking cool. And uh, we'll show you the process for doing a Frenched in taillight that you can do on any vehicle. So let's get started. All right, so whenever I'm doing anything like this, we're gonna cut a hole in a fresh panel that we just made. I usually try and make a template like we did here that I can stick on as well as doing like some center lines or some cross lines so that we can get everything in. You can trace the shape and you can stand back and look at it and make sure that you like where it's at. So for instance, on this particular panel, I wasn't sure if I wanted to center the taillight or if we actually wanted to drop it down into like the bottom two thirds. Um, and after I drew it and stood back and then held a license plate up, I was able to kind of figure out that center was actually pretty good because the end proportions when we have a little motorcycle plate on here, it'll actually work out really, really nice. So that's a little tip. Make sure that you're drawing your, your center line or your cross line and it'll make a little pattern, trace it on. You can stand back. You can always uh, wipe it off with some pre and change it if you don't like it. Once we cut this hole in the panel, uh, then it's a lot more work to fix it and reverse it if you don't like it or if it's a, if it's really crooked or something like that. So make sure you're drawing all those lines on and checking everything out before you get any tools out and start cutting the metal.
All right, so I, uh, I drilled a hole in the center, as you guys saw, and we used the body saw because we have double thick metal here. And I saw just inside my Sharpie mark to leave myself a little bit of room to, to sand and file it out. And then I ended up using a little two inch surface prep tool with a flap disc just to get in here and quickly take away material. Uh, so you can see the lights getting pretty close to fitting here. Now the one thing I noticed that you may have to do when you do this stuff to work on the fly is we're really close to the shelf area that's in here. So if we go any higher when we're sanding this, uh, we're going to have issues with making our brackets and it fitting. So what I'm doing is actually doing most of my filing for the top to bottom fitment on the bottom and that allows the light just to drop down just a little bit so that it will give us a little room at the top we need. So once we get the top to bottom fitment good, it's really easy just to come in with a file on the sides and get it to fit in uh, just how we want. So I'm going to work on just using a hand file and slowly working the piece and sneaking up onto it until the light, the lens fits in nice and tight and it sits against this little flange on the outside and then we'll be on to uh, just making the buckets fit. All right, so now that we got the mount light mounted from behind, as you can see, we need basically a way to keep the light so that it stays in the body. Uh, so the, these are the original mounting tabs that are on here with the, the uh, nuts to mount it. And what we want to do is use these original studs to hold this in place. So there's a bunch of ways you could do this, but biggest thing is you need to make sure that it's easy to take the light off to service it if you need to replace the bulb. So you could make a little Z-shaped bracket that could go up and attach and uh, different things like that. But probably the most simple way to tackle it on this project is to just get two little bolts that are the same size as our studs and we can weld one on either side, top and bottom. And then we will make a little bar that goes across that'll be drilled uh, in three spots that'll go through the stud and, and through each of these and that will pull it down tight and you can take the bar off with the taillight. Super simple and uh, really easy for this project. All right, so we got the tail light all mounted up, and just for fun, we, uh, we lit it all up. It looks awesome. It's pretty cool to, uh, to envision this thing driving down the road. So uh, to recap, we basically just used some bolts that we uh, spot welded to each side of the tail light, took a little piece of 14 gauge steel, punched some holes in it, and tightened them down, and they basically clamp everything in place. So the final fitment, when the, the scooter is all done and painted and ready to go, we're gonna put a little piece of rubber around the tail light uh, in between where the taillight lens actually touches the metal so that we're not chipping the lens. But for now, 
this is just great, everything fits good and we can keep working around the project. So this is a nice little change from doing heavy, dirty rust repair uh, to do something custom in some fresh metal it was really nice and it was a nice, um, nice little boost of, of confidence on the project. So that's all I have for this one. I appreciate you guys following along. Uh, if you'd like to see more about the Cushman project, definitely subscribe to our channel. We're putting out videos as we do this build all the way from a rusty pile of parts to something that's done, custom, and driving down the road. Thanks guys, catch you later.